Hi guys, so we're back with a new episode. Welcome to hashtag food for thought with Garabo and Konzi team. Today guys, uh, we are super excited to welcome you. We've got a very special guest. We've got Ikeheng Maluleke from Grain South Africa, which is a producer organization that actually represents uh, grain farmers across South Africa. So apart from her passion, which is international trade, Ikeheng is actually monitoring movements of fertilizers, you know, what's happening with the inputs, you know, are farmers being squeezed, are farmers happy, yay, nay, things like that, uh, which brings us to today's topic. We'll be talking all things inputs, mm-hmm. given what has been happening in the global and domestic market for over the past year. And, you know, continuing, we always see on the news to say input uh, costs are going higher and higher. So I would like to just welcome you, Ika Heng, you and say, um, please just paint a picture of where we are in terms of um, input costs. Okay, so what's happening in terms of um, inputs, it has basically been a perfect storm brewing. And I'm going to take you guys back to 2020, you know. So when COVID hit, we had a situation where a lot of borders had to be closed. And China, being the biggest producer of most of the agrochemicals, as well as fertilizers, was basically shut to the world. This created a bit of a backlog when it comes to um, supply of fertilizer as well as agrochemicals. Right. And then fast forward to 2021, we had a situation where China had a problem when it came to flooding, where they basically had a lot of rain damage and had Mm -hmm. to close down a lot of their manufacturing plants. And then there was also a situation or actually a current or recent situation where they didn't um, have enough power supply. So basically, they had to ration power supply between different manufacturers. And that also created a bit of a lag in terms of production, you know. And I mean, this is a situation where the rest of the world is waiting. There's increased demand in terms of production. And we, as a small drop in the ocean, are basically at a disadvantage, you know. Mm -hmm. South Africa um, imports 80 plus percent of our fertilizer as well as our agrochemicals. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine we are a price taker and producers can't come to a situation where they actually shortchange themselves when it comes to using fertilizer or chemicals. They basically need to buy as much as they need Mm -hmm. and at whatever high price. So you can imagine now that this creates an issue where their margins are being squeezed. Mm. So I like what you're talking about with uh, the cost squeeze and producers having to either decide are they buying a spray program or fertilizer or just waiting and hoping that the yields will just realize, right? So from what I understand from what I've read, I know that glyphosate is one of the main ingredients that's really been in shortage. It's also the highest one that has been demanded. And that actually forms part as a base for weed control, right? And then you also get the glufosinate, on the other hand, which is um, also used during post-emergence, especially in soybeans. So does this relate to the lowest soybean yields or production that is estimated perhaps for this season, that maybe producers were not able to acquire glufosinate, and therefore that's why we see the potential 4% decrease in production for the 2021-2022 season. Could that be? Okay, um, so at the moment, we can't really tell what the issue is. So remember, we had a problem with a bit of flooding. Mm. We have now a problem with a bit of a shortage when it comes to your agrochemicals like your glyphosate, you mm. know. So producers had to basically look for alternatives mm-hmm. that they could use in, in the market. But what I could understand is that in as much as there was a bit of a shortage and there was a bit of an, um, a high price, producers were still able to get their hands on um, these um, Uh, resources Mm. so we can't I can't say for sure at the moment Mm. if that would have an impact in terms of our yields or not that we can only actually see once we realize um, our yield potential Mm. okay so now uh, we know in terms of uh, maize and other grains you know there's a platform on uh, JSC suffix where you can go and hedge you know your price and protect yourself against risks and stuff like that so in terms of fertilizer and other inputs you know, is there such a tool for farmers to just make sure that, you know, they they, they, they actually safe, you know, their mm-hmm. risk is low and then they can actually um, secure the inputs at a lower cost? 
Okay, so this is how the market or the industry is structured. Producers don't necessarily buy directly from the manufacturer overseas. So you have your big companies that actually buy, and then these guys will sell to um, your representatives that will then sell to the producers. Yeah. You know, so this creates a bit of a, a distance between how what a producer can and can't do. Mm. And uh, basically, in terms of hedging, you can just imagine how do you hedge something that you get from someone who gets yes, it from another someone. person, mm. you know, whereas with suffix, you can basically do it yourself or get mm. a broker. And that's basically, you know, a short cha uh, a short chain um, in terms of um, hedging against um, this because it's not on our local market, it creates a big issue. As I said to you guys, mm -hmm. we import quite a lot, mm -hmm. right? And even in the market or in the international market, there's a lot of factors that affect supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a situation where you can actually hedge. So if your oil price goes up, your fertilizer and your agrochemicals go up. If you don't have um, enough natural gas, mm -hmm. then your fertilizers go up. So there's a lot of um, dynamics at play that you basically have no control over, unlike when you can um, hedge against whether your forex or your um, grains. Yeah, I mean the world has really been ablaze recently, Ika. Um, you spoke about oil prices. I mean the average February uh, Brent crude prices were around ninety-eight dollars mm. per barrel, right? And this week, I think on Friday, yeah, this morning, it was about hundred and twelve dollars per do uh, per barrel. Like because of what's happening in the world with Ukraine and Russia and the sanctions, basic basically, in you know, just everyone is afraid, and it's we are afraid for further supply disruptions, and the price is just going up and up, and like you said, it's going to affect the input prices. But also another thing is Russia is one of the, le actually, I think it is the leading fertilizer exporter, right? It's quite a big one, yes. So that is definitely going to add even further pressure on the prices for this season. That is correct. I'm sure you've been talking to your, co uh, your producers. What is, what, are the, what is their feel? How do they think they can mitigate this? Or like you said, they're just going to take the price. Like, is there anything that the industry can do for them? So, unfortunately, there's not much we can do. Mm. Um, especially when it comes to geopolitics, it's basically a wait and see kind of scenario, you know. Um, fortunately, uh, for the summer grain producers, they are done um, planting. Mm. Um, but now it's actually time Indeed. for the winter grains mm. to, to start planting. Um, and so they're in a situation where it's almost April, they need to start, you know. Mm. Um, and if inputs go up this high, then what do they do? So now it means a producer needs to sit down and actually readjust his production plans to say, can I actually afford to do this? You know, do I cut down on some stuff? What do I actually do? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's the, the reality of the situation. And basically he needs to sit down and calculate if he will make it or not. You know, um, what we can do is just give guidance in terms of, okay, this is what the price is doing. How do you go about this? Mm -hmm. We actually... Um, advise our producers to buy as early as possible their inputs mm. you know um, producers who manage to buy will probably buy like late december or ready for april mm. planting you know and those guys would be the guys that actually get a bit of a reprieve in terms of what is happening at the moment yeah definitely because um the forecasts are actually that uh this trend is not supposed to slow down anytime soon you know so it's just going to be prices going up and up and up so if you do have at money saved aside it's better to actually buy in advance and not actually wait for the start of the season when you're busy working the land to actually you know buy the the fertilizer okay so um since uh you are the plug you know when it comes <laughs> to <laughs> grains and all seeds all things you know, related to that. So we cannot live without actually talking about that. So I think uh, because we've had a very challenging start of the season where we had excessive rainfall, um, which actually um, impacted farmers on the ground, do, uh, would you please just elaborate on what is ha what happened and, you know, what is the sense on the ground currently? We have a lot of regions that were impacted by the flooding mm -hmm. and this is not everywhere. 
you know um the 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 feeling when when all of these rains were happening or when the floods happened was that we're going to have like a really decrease in terms of production what we've seen in the recent uh, production estimates is that um maize um is going to go down this is total maize between mm. yellow and white is basically going to go down by about 10% mm. you know and i can't really um attribute this just to the flooding mm. remember with um your maize production it it takes about um it takes up a lot of inputs so a lot of producers would rather in turn do oil seeds Okay. which can be planted late mm -hmm. and which can basically use less um inputs mm -hmm. it's not um, significantly less but in terms of the rand value back in your pocket it's basically something that makes a bit of a difference mm -hmm. you know so what we've seen is that for instance sunflower production has gone up by 34% mm -hmm. so you can see the shift between the two where producers pro probably decided okay i'm not going to do maize this year i'm basically going to do you know sunflower or soybean mm -hmm. and this is not just um in terms of the flooding it basically also has to do with how much am i inputs going to cost okay. me you know mm. um so we we've, we've also seen situations where uh, producers had to plant and replant and replant like five to even eight oh times um because of the flooding you know so they've they've really been resilient they've really been agile they've mm -hmm. been trying to adapt and some unfortunately couldn't plant you know so we have a lot of different situations in different regions but basically in as much as we are in a bit of a fix we also see that overall production is still looking good yes. imagine having to replant like eight times mm. over and above having to pay so much more in terms of um input costs that is just uh, tragic yeah and i really think the cushion has been the very good commodity prices this season for all the grains and the oil seed we've been seeing you know record high uh, sunflower prices and maize prices also fairly strong even with the wheat because global prices are are, are are trading fairly high and that is impacting our local um, grains and oil seed prices so at least there's a bit of relief somewhere so over the years we've seen a definite change you know in terms of weather patterns etc cetera, etc cetera, where we find even other regions you know uh, tend to plant later you know than initial um trends would you know point to mm -hmm. so how do farmers sort of um deal how are they dealing with climate change and how are they making sure that uh, they producing in a more sustainable way you know nowadays we all talking about the sdgs so we have to align girl definitely you know if there's anything i can say about producers is that they're very agile you know they're very adaptive mm. um and if there's one thing that producers need to know is that they need to keep learning you know now we're faced with a situation with this climate change what do you do as a producer so the idea is that you record data you know you can only know that you you starting to plant later once you can see um historic data to see that no man mm -hmm. um we've moved this direction over the past couple of years and producers will tell you about their region you know um and even sharing information to say okay what are you doing are you also planting how can i go about doing this so basically learning and understanding what the environment requires of them and i would say that um seed companies have actually come to the party in terms mm. of creating cultivars that are shorter um growers you know they will take lesser time to grow um for instance in terms of resistance to dry weather for, you know so there's a lot of technology that they put into seed that producers are basically able to adjust with as they um adjust their production patterns there's also a lot of things in terms of for instance conservation agriculture mm -hmm. that producers are starting to be acquainted with it's still new but it's more of a situation where they learn as they go mm -hmm. you know um for instance as green sa we would do trainings a couple of times a year towards different producers in different regions about conservation agriculture how do you go about it what is no till how do you go about doing such you know so that they can also be able to adjust within their farms and that they're able to produce in a sustainable way. Mm. I love what you said about sustainable agriculture just bringing it back to the inputs. You know there's as a downside risk also but in long term when you view where inputs are going, you know they 
there's a more movement into the intensification of, you know, international policies saying that we want lower MRLs if you're going to export. So you see a lot of growth in biological products being introduced into the market. We're finding biostimulants that are new in the South African market, but it's things that our farmers need to adapt and get acquainted with because this is the future of farming, you know. And you, you, you have this integrated pest management system. So you still use the conventional agrochemicals mm -hmm. with the biological. And this is how we as farmers need to start thinking about saving our environment and actually farming for the future and for our future generations. So I, I love that Grain SA is actually, you know, already looking into that space. Besides everything else that we have covered today, what other challenges would you say um, farmers in the grain industry, you know, are faced with? Okay, so today we've covered the two major issues that producers are struggling with, mm -hmm. and this is increasing inputs um, as well as climate change. But in terms of our local market, the other situation that we're facing is the issue of infrastructure, mm. um, the issue of increasing electricity prices, you know, that actually hits a producer where it hurts the most. So now, for instance, we have a good crop. We don't have proper infrastructure to actually export. You know, if if you want to export um, certain grains at a certain time, you find that there's a clash. You know, you want to import wheat and then you also want to export maize. So we have shortage when it comes to infrastructure. This is in terms of our ports. This is in terms of our damaged roads. And so this creates a problem with producers when it comes to actually getting their produce to the market. Um, when it comes to um, electricity costs, we all know that the average household spends quite a lot when it comes to electricity imagine a producer who actually has to um irrigate you know mm -hmm. so um there's a lot that producers are struggling with this is over and above the situations that we've um spoken about but i would say these are the major two ones that they've actually been um concerned about recently uh, so yeah guys uh, we've also been super concerned increases in fuel uh, prices Electricity hikes, we are barely coping ourselves. Yeah. So you can just imagine our producers. Exactly. So um, that's it from uh, us today, guys. It's been fun. Thank you, Ika, for having joined us today. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll see you next time. Yes. If you've never subscribed to this channel and it's your first time viewing, please do subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Like, comment, do engage with us. Share this video with everybody in your world, your moms, your dads, your uncles, that Umi that is farming, your neighbor. We love to grow this agri-community of ours. Until next time, this is us from Food for Thought with Karabo and Konsi. Until next time.